KFI, Mo Kelly. I'm back. And we're live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Yes, I am back on terra firma. Solid ground, dry land. As we kick off, I guess, the end of summer, kind of, sort of. Yeah, we're getting there. Labor Day weekend is now over. And let me say, before I go any further, how wonderful a job that Mark Ronner and Tiffany Hobbs did in my absence. Thank you very much. Very nice of you to say. We both had a ball, and we appreciate you uh, letting us do it and uh, trusting us. Thank you. All sincere, all genuine. When I was on the ship, Royal Caribbean, on my way to Ensenada, Mexico, I did have the opportunity to catch some of the show Friday evening. When you could have been having fun instead. <laughs> no, no, no. I had it. No, I was, I was seven drinks in, oh, so okay. that made it even more entertaining. Oh, yeah, the, the alcohol increases the enjoyment of the show uh, by an order of magnitude. Being able to listen to name that movie called Classic with you um, steering the the ship, as it were, uh, was really, really enjoyable for me to just sit back and listen to the show and take in the game from a listener perspective. And also, I had no idea what movies you had selected so i was playing just like anyone else and being able to hear some of the movies that you had chosen i got maybe i want to say five of the seven um i was wondering if i made it too easy uh because i didn't want to go too deep and i so i kept it to essentially horror classics that were pretty well-known hits uh and everybody got the answers really fast well all i can say is look you are a radio professional through and through so it wasn't like i expected anything differently but i am um uh, i am pleasantly surprised at how seamlessly and smoothly you ran the show i mean because i know what you're doing from behind the scenes i know all the different levers that you're pulling and, and the buttons that you're pushing it's not easy well at all. i really appreciate that it means the world to me to hear you say that thank you very much and Monday was no different. It was just a, a very enjoyable show to listen to. And I think I, anyone who knows me, anyone who knows to all of this is one of my favorite sayings. And I mean it each and every time that I say it, that your success is our success. And I know that you were a damn successful well, over the weekend. Like I said, I learned at the feet of the master. And we had a terrific guest both nights, Burt Ward on Friday from Batman. Yes. And Allison uh, uh, Martino from uh, Vintage LA Monday night. Couldn't have asked for better guests. They were tons of fun. I can say this, and I think you'll understand this. There's something intoxicating about the mi microphone. It's, there's something really enjoyable about the microphone. Uh, there is, but I mean, I went straight home and, and got the usual bums rush from everybody. It's not like my life changed in any significant way. You get, you get brought back down to earth pretty quick, believe oh, me. Oh, absolutely. My wife doesn't even listen to yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, so, so uh, I asked her, like, did you hear the show tonight? Oh, no, I was watching Real Housewives. I'm sorry. <laughs> We we what have this ongoing debate at home whether whether or not the long suffering one has ever even read any of the books <laughs> I've written, and she insists she has. But I'm She's not lying. I mean, if you get to She's the point lying. where you got to quiz each other about that, then why why even bother? Well, I got to say this: I enjoyed being away. I enjoyed being away and leaving the show in very capable hands. And I don't know if you know this, Mark. You're not from California, but California's had this long, po protracted battle with banning plastic bags, especially yeah. in grocery stores. Well, we have news on that front. You know, I thought I was going to talk about L.A. Metro today, but they didn't have an issue today. But they had one yesterday, and Mark Ronner hit it out of the park covering that. Well, it's still early. There could be one before the end <laughs> of the show. There, there might be one happening right now. Someone could be stabbed right now. Uh huh. You know, that's the knife going in. Right there. Yeah, we've got, we've got nearly three hours. It's almost a certainty. Uh, look, Gilligan got lost in less time. So, you know, you never know. You just never know. We have a Tesla update, actually two Tesla updates. There's so much great stuff to talk about tonight. But when we come back, we're going to tell you about the most catfished states in the country. And, of course, somewhere California is in the mix. You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly on demand from KFI AM 640. And if you don't know, catfish is basically 
fooling someone online. Presenting yourself is one thing when you're actually something or someone else. And that includes romance scams. That includes FBI things. It, it includes all those things. You put forward this persona online because you're trying to dupe the person who you are in conversation with. Now, in order to find the most catfished states in the country, researchers at Imacil used Google Keyword Planner reporting from the FBI as well as data from other sources to rank states by the number of victims per 100,000 residents, the number of romance scams reported annually, the total amount of money lost due to the scams, and the number of catfishing-related searches such as, quote, how do I know if I'm being catfished, close quote. I don't know about that last part. I don't know if that actually helps, but it was still figured in. So let's find out which state is the most catfish state in the country, the state who either falls for it the most, the, the state which ends up paying the most in romance scams. Put another way, the dumbest state in the union. Let's do this. Coming in at number 10 of the most catfish states in the country. Alaska, with 11.9 victims per 100,000 people. They get lonely. It would make sense. 87 reported romance scams. A total amount of money lost to these scams, $3.5 million. Hmm, okay. Coming in at number nine. New Mexico. 8.1 victims per 100,000, 171 romance scam reports, 1.9 million reportedly lost to these romance scams. Number eight. Oregon, or as some people say, Oregon, 8.5 victims per 100,000 people. 361 romance scam reports, and there will be some variance. Some states will be lower in some categories, higher than others, but they have a composite score. But listen to this. Oregon, total amount of money lost to romance scams, $12 million. Hmm. So I guess they're easier to dupe in Oregon? I don't know. Number seven. Deep in the heart of Texas, everything's bigger in Texas, even the dumb people. 5.9 victims per 100,000. 1,752 romance scam reports. A total of $65.4 million lost to romance scams. So Texas is really dumb when it comes to this. Number six. Utah. 7.7 victims per 100,000, 256 romance scam reports, $7.7 .7 million. They're not giving up a lot of money in Utah. Maybe they're just, I don't know, checking them out of other things. How's that work in Utah? Like, hey, would you like an extra wife? <laughs> Foosh, come on. He had to send that to the judges for a second opinion because he took a little <laughs> while with that one. Coming in at number five. Mark Ronner, Washington. No. Yes. No. 8.5 8 victims per 100,000, 657 romance scam reports, $31.9 million total money lost to romance scams. It's all got to be on the eastern side of the state where they listen to Mark Furman on the radio. <laughs> I am noticing a pattern that most of these entrants, at least so far, on the western portion of the United States, either they think we have more money or we're more dumb. We're starved for love. That's what it is. <laughs> or some sort of combination. Yeah. Coming in at number four. Another western state. Arizona. Nine victims per 100,000. 653 romance scam reports. $18.8 .8 million. Not as lucrative but good enough to secure the number four spot. And number three. Nevada. 11.2 victims per 100,000. 
352 romance scam reports, $15 million in lost uh, money to romance scams. Hmm. You would think they had enough professionals in Nevada that this wouldn't be a problem. All right. I, I, look, it doesn't make sense to me, but they're still falling for it in Nevada. Coming in at number two. Is it California or is it someone else? Number two. Florida. Not surprising, no, really. It, it would make sense to me. Florida. Florida. It, yeah, yeah. It's not the smartest state around. It yeah. just It's not that. No one would say Florida is home of the smartest individuals in the country. Yeah, I don't think no. Mensa headquarters wants to be located in Florida. No, not at all. Eight victims per 100,000, 1,738 romance scam reports. Maybe they're targeting the rich and elderly. And total amount of money lost to romance scams, $70.4 million. Damn. That's dumb and damn. That's number two. So you know what that means for number one, right? Oh, man. <laughs> Number one, numero uno is none other than California, the dumbest state in the union when it comes to being catfished. 7.7 .7 victims per 100,000. Tops of the list as far as romance scam reports at 3,023, almost double anyone else. Total amount of money lost to romance scams. Hold on to your booties. $184 million. Okay, now, as someone who is on dating apps, uh -oh. I can tell you that I can see how California is number one. And this is why. Because California is also home to some of the most beautiful people on the planet. Some of the women in California, and, and there isn't a man in the studio that could say, it's not true, gorgeous. Women would say the same, gorgeous men. Some of these women on these apps are absolutely stellar. The the thing that I don't think enough guys who are desperate in California get is when you see a woman that says things like her hobbies are taking trips and shopping, your immediate thing should be X, swipe left, hell no. But a lot of dudes, they see these women wearing next to nothing. And for some reason, they think that these are real profiles. Yep, and right, then right. next, you know, they're, they're involved. And sometimes I play the game and I like to see what they're asking for. And I'm like, I want to see where this is going. And I did once I followed one person. And as soon as she said, you know, I want to come to California to see you. And I'm like, wait a minute, your profile says you're in Orange County. She said, well, I just moved. And I'm like, okay, this is how it happened. Here, here, here's the thing. My thing is when you look at these profiles of these beautiful people, mm -hmm. be it men or women, it is very well curated, the the pictures. They are model-esque. Yes. And you are looking for love on a dating app? I'm quite sure some are, but by and large, no. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes what they've started doing is they've started to put themselves in more regular situations. Oh, And that then they start the saying things like, this is not a catfish. And there's actually one profile I saw yesterday where exactly she's what a actually catfish doing, would say. she's doing videos like I'm doing videos to show you that I'm real. Uh, there are people who show themselves at local places, but I'm like, this is still a lie. Oh, it you can be catfished lie. by more than one person. Yeah, absolutely. Working together. Utah and California are tied in the number of victims taken in by the scams at 7.7 .7 per 100,000 residents. And California also ranks highest in a number of romance scams, as I was saying, at 3,023. So if you want to target someone, successfully target someone, target someone who lives in California, your odds are even better. You've got to give a little credit to the fact that California is the most populous state. So some of this is just a matter of uh, having more people here. So, of course, we're going to have more scams. Y yeah, but also I think it's the lifestyle of Californians where... There's a better chance. Look, if you're going to rob someone, rob someone who has likely has money. The cost of living is higher in California. So the people in California have, relatively speaking, higher means. I, who wants to catfish someone in Mississippi? Well, and also people in California are snootier. 
You know, you try to, you just a regular person trying to go holler someone beautiful in a club or in a bar, even in the mall. And they're like, no, I'm with my dog or no, I have to go and get on my Vespa or whatever stupid thing they have to say. Uh, it's people in California are also a lot more standoffish and a lot more rude. You mean in person? In person, in person. They're more likely to, you know, tell you to fly off a cliff or whatever. So people in California are a lot shyer when it comes to dating. Is that, Stefan, is that true? That's absolutely true. Would you consider yourself to be a shy guy? Uh, yeah. And so that's why I can totally uh, uh, back up to Walla's point because. Are you getting ready to make a confession here? No, nothing's happened, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> in the past, I've tried and mm. I'm just like. Are you sure you've never been catfished? Cool. Oh, no, I've never been catfished. You sure? Yeah. I've that's what someone who's never been catfished, that's what, that's what they really wants to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh, sure. uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> never. No, not me. I got your back, folks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever been duped out of money? Oh, no, never, never. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Under no circumstances has anyone ever fooled me into thinking that they were a beautiful woman online. They sent me actual photos. <laughs> Why would they lie? Here's a little tip. If there is Cyrillic lettering in the ad... <laughs> <laughs> Give it a pass. <laughs> now people are Googling, what is Cyrillic? It's later with Mo Kelly. California, they've gone all in on banning plastic bags again. We'll tell you the latest. You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly on demand from KFI AM640. California lawmakers have voted to ban all plastic grocery bags. If you think like we've been here before, well, yeah, we have. They've approved legislation that effectively bans all plastic grocery bags. I'm talking about Senate Bill 1053 and Assembly Bill 2236, which prohibit grocery stores from offering any bags other than paper at checkout. And the devil's in the details. I don't know. It doesn't seem that it actually impacts those plastic bags that you would put your fruit in, you know, in the produce section. I think those plastic bags are still allowed. But the one to check out, no more. You may remember, California became the first state in the country to pass a plastic grocery ban bag, a bag ban. And that was back in 2014, 10 years ago. You think, well, how is this new? In fact, we as voters, we upheld the law in 2016. But the original law, SB 270, allowed grocery stores to still offer plastic bags as long as they were deemed reusable and recyclable. And this uh, loophole, according to KTLA, led to a surge in the use of thicker plastic bags, which manufacturers claim meet the criteria but are still rarely reused. That is untrue. I reuse all of those thicker plastic bags. They are great for picking up dog stuff. They are great for lining trash cans. They are great all around the house for all sorts of uses, but no more. We will not have them anymore in any of our stores. And this is where I think a reasonable person can rightfully find fault and take issue with our legislators. Because one, I don't think this actually addresses a problem. And number two, it doesn't do it in a way which is going to make any meaningful impact. Number three, it skips over all the other plastic and the other plastic bags in every single grocery store that you and I have ever been in and will go into either tonight, tomorrow or the next day. So what exactly are you doing? Are you limiting somehow our our, our, our use of plastics and, and what's going to end up in the ocean? I don't think so. I really don't think so. If anything, you're just being able to say, hey, we've done our part in the war against climate change or something, 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 yada, yada, yada. Plastic is bad. That's what I think is going on. And Mark Ronner has his eyebrow up. So I was involuntary. I didn't, I didn't mean to do that. I, I, you think I can control these things? No, I think that we should make a distinction between meaningful legislation and lip service. I understand your point, but it sounded like you were almost on the verge of using that term. What term do you, am I thinking of? Virtue signaling. Not, I, I, I hate the phrase. Yeah. Because I think it's reductionist. Well, it's despicable and yeah. stupid. Um, yeah, I don't. No, I don't think they were doing this to send a signal 
to those in agreement that, you know, we're on your side. No, I think this is this is something that can say that we've passed, we've got something done, but not in relation to the bigger picture of climate change or lim limiting the amount of plastic still in, in society. Sure, we need a bigger solution to the problem, but don't you think every little bit helps? Not really. Okay. I, I, good no, talk. No no no, 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 no. I don't think, like, for for example, you know, it's almost like, I'm trying to think of a quick example. All right. Let's say you're driving your car and you take your foot off the gas and you try to coast as much as you can. Are you really saving a lot of gas? Probably not. Maybe if you do it all the time over the course of a year and you're you're coasting, you know, 65 percent of the time, maybe you're saving gas. But other than that, probably not. Yeah, but it's like the plastic straw thing. Like, is it really going to affect your life that much? Come on. Well, both ways. I will say the plastic straw thing is really not going to make a dent in the way that we still have the plastic spoons. And I would say if you want to have the climate change argument, we are wasting more water and resources. We talk about recycle, reuse, or whatever, replace, whatever the things are. When we have, when we uh, outlaw these plastic forks, plastic spoons, plastic straws, as opposed to um, allowing them in restaurants. I'm not willing to uh, go to the mat over plastic forks if that's what you're well, trying to well, provoke. I'm just saying plastic in general. I'm saying it has its place and it has its use. And where we do use it, I think it, it, it's uh, more economical. It may be on, on some fronts, but there's no free rides on Earth or in life. And so you see these pictures of illustrating our disposable society and they're really sobering when, when you see uh, the accumulation of it all right think of it this way we can get rid of all the plastic bags but if we're not willing to go to manufacturers and big business business and say you know what we need you to figure out a different container for your two liter sodas we need you to figure out a different container for all these other products which have a far more deleterious impact, far more impact as far as the amount of plastics which are in grocery stores. Let's keep it just in grocery stores. You know, if you got to the packaging, then I'd be more inclined to hop aboard. Here's what's going to happen. I grew up with my grandparents and they were depression people. We're, we're going to have to show up to the store with jugs and stuff and just have them refilled and, and take them home from now on. Well, you know, we kind of do that with water bottles as it is. Uh -huh. But I, I, I would say this. You know, we have milk cartons and we have all sorts of products which are in cartons, but we haven't said to Coca-Cola or any major um, uh, distributor of goods or services that, you know, you need to find some other way to package your goods to limit the amount of plastics in grocery stores. If you want to do that, then I'd be more inclined to believe you. And I was being flippant at the beginning, but I was actually being serious. As long as I can walk into a grocery store and there's still those plastic bags for the produce, what the hell are we doing? I bring my food to work in those every day until they disintegrate. Which means they're not going to disintegrate anytime soon. They are reusable. Um, are you talking about the grocery? Are you talking about the produce ones? Or are you talking about the, the regular ones? No, the thick ones, the ones that you could oh, yeah. uh, you could carry a human head in yes. if you were in a Sam Peckinpah movie. <laughs> but they are reusable, and I I get plenty of use. Yes, Stefan is holding up one right now. The thick uh, grocery bags they are really useful. Yeah, if uh, if they made bring me the head of Alfredo Garcia today, Warren Oates would be carrying around the head in one of those because that's how resilient they are. Uh, and where are the, the the paper bags? I mean, are there any grocery stores which use them with any frequency? I think you got to ask for them, don't Whole you? Whole Foods will use them, but I don't know about the... When I went to Vons and Rouse, they just had the plastic. They just said, do you want a bag? Yes. I'm not carrying all this stuff out in my hands. No. Well, you know, what's funny, it's, uh, and I didn't realize when I moved to California six years ago, you got to ask for bags. <laughs> so you have a whole cart full of stuff, and the checker uh, asks me... Would you like any bags with that? And I'm like, no, I'm wearing cargo pants. I got this. <laughs> well, it got to be a point where if you do the self-checkout, there's usually one person who's supposedly there to help you out if you have an issue. Uh -huh. And that person is never around or never paying attention. And so I had an issue. Well, depending, let me put it this way. Depending on where you shop, if you shop in the hood, the, the bags are not left out because people will keep stealing them. So you have to ask that person 
for a bag or two. Even though you put it on the screen and said, okay, yes, I purchased two bags. You have to ask that person. And more times than not, that person is nowhere to be found. They're handling something else in the store. And I've already purchased my bags. So I got to a certain point where I just put it in the cart and or in that hand cart and I'll walk out the store with it and I'll leave the hand cart where the shopping carts are because I'm, I'm not going to carry all that stuff by hand. You're a rebel. Well, look, I paid for the bags that I didn't get. They're getting off light. Oh, no, that ought to learn them one. <laughs> Why do I think he's mocking me? I wouldn't so say that. So soon it. after me coming no, back. No, no, I'm, I'm so happy to see you. I Mocking you is the last thing I would do. It's Later with Mo Kelly. KFI 8640. We're live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly on demand from KFI AM 640. We have two pieces of Tesla news very quickly before we end this hour. And then we bring in Twala Sharp to tell us all about his first cruise ship experience. If you're local to the Burbank area, coming up on October 10th, Tesla will be having a robo-taxi event. They're going to roll out, pun intended, their robo-taxi product at Warner Brothers Studio, which is right next door to us. Tesla has been designing this for a number of years, but they want to use the Burbank neighborhood as a way of demonstrating how its robo taxi, which is going to be in direct competition with Waymo and and uh, Cruise, uh, whatever the other one is, where there's going to drive around Burbank, which is a suburban city and relatively easy terrain to help demonstrate how someone could go from here to there, or, uh, start in a suburban community, and go downtown. So Tesla is going all the way in. The robo taxi market, much to my dismay, and As much to, they should be. Uh, and here comes the paid informant. Look, no, unpredictable. No, no. Look, you know I am against all things Tesla, but I support, oh, except for this. Right? I support this robo taxi movement. Mm, okay. So is, you, is uh, Tuala wearing a new Rolex today? No, but I think he has a. Tesla in the garage. Uh-huh. I, I, I thought there was a new one. Yeah, you got one of them <laughs> cyber trucks there, Tuala. It had paper plates on it, so I knew it was brand new, and I couldn't figure out whose it would be, but <laughs> there's only like five of us in the building, and it's not Mark, <laughs> and it's not me, and it's not Stefan. me. Okay? The math is the math. <laughs> That's like, this is just coincidental. You, you know you're supposed to acknowledge when it's like a paid endorsement look you know the, the new tesla in the garage is coincidental it has nothing to do with me i am a supporter of all things robo taxi all right well that's the first piece of news tesla news but the bad news if you're a tesla owner and this has to do with owners right here in california tesla owners here have reportedly had their vehicles towed from crime scenes by police towed Police are towing Teslas because these Teslas may have been placed in sentry mode, which sets the cars on board cameras to turn on and capture everything that goes on outside of the vehicle. Well, these sentry mode cameras are picking up crimes sometimes, having nothing to do with the Tesla itself, but it's collecting evidence on behalf of law enforcement. Now, here's the real rub. Here's the problem I would have. The police usually, doesn't say always, usually ask for the owner's permission to access their Tesla sentry mode backup USB drive, which is located in the glove box. And from there, they can download the content. I know Mark and I are going to be on the same page with this one. Listen to this. If the owners can't be located, in other words, they are not in contact, they are not in touch. If they can't be located, officers obtain search warrants and tow the EVs into evidence. I think I figured out where Tawala's coming from in all this. After we have the singularity and it's the Terminator apocalypse, Tawala thinks he's the one who's going to get spared. Well, you know, he's like the familiar in Blade and the Vampire Saga. He thinks that if he just goes along and sells out humanity, there'll be a spot at the table for him or under the table, as it were, you know. Later on in life. Are you saying that yes. If, yes. if Elon yes. Musk or yes. Tesla reaches out yes. and says, hey, Mo, we want you to do a live broadcast from Warner Brothers Studio for this Tesla launch and have the crew go around in the Tesla RoboTaxi, are you saying you're going to say no? You know, that's like that's like saying, hey, Mo, if the NBA reaches out to you and wants you to sign a, a two-month contract with the, with the Lakers, you know, are you up for it? 
we pay you the union scale, you know, veterans minimum or something. Yeah, oh, yes, I would accept it. But you know what, Twala? That stuff is never going to happen. Okay, okay? Well, I'm reaching out to Tesla to go on and get Well, give Elon my love, okay? Let him know I said hello. I will. The San Francisco Chronicle reports that the Oakland police sought to tow at least three Teslas in July and August. And now is an accepted part of their crime fighting tactics. I mean, I understand how it can be useful, but I also understand it seems like a violation of the Fourth Amendment. I, my car is not a part of the crime. You know, it's not involved in the crime. And you, according to this, haven't even made contact with me. Maybe I'm out of town. Maybe you still think we have a Fourth Amendment. Well, <laughs> you know, I know, but, you know, at least. On the surface, at least, you know, fool me. Act like we have a Fourth Amendment. No, they're saying like, oh, we can't get in touch. It's like, you know, have you said like you you tried? Well, I tried to get in touch with you. I called once and, and the line was busy. Or I called once and you didn't answer. What does try mean to get in touch with somebody? And then they tow your car. And then are they going to tow it back? Are they, are they going to charge you for towing and storage like they would any other parking citation? Well, they don't perform this service for you for free, Mo. Anyhow. <laughs> See, there's another reason not to like. Never mind. Add it to the list. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about this. Something else I'm doing. The Blue Door Bash is coming out. Boys and Girls Clubs of Carson is part of the Boys and Girls Club of America movement, which provides outcome-based after school, during school, and summer programming to youth ages 6 through 18 years old. Boys and Girls Club of Carson has just announced that this year's annual Blue Door Bash Gala will be held at SoFi Stadium Saturday, October 5th at 6 p.m. And I'm honored to once again serve as its MC. This year's theme is Mission Possible. And the Blue Door Bash Gala will feature a silent auction and a complete evening of celebration of community leader, leaders and future leaders. Come on out and be part of the festivities with me. Get all the information at bgccarson.org. Again, that's B as in boys, G as in girls, C as in club, carson.org. And I'll see you Saturday night, October 5th at SoFi Stadium. KFI AM640, we're live everywhere, the iHeartRadio app. Perfect for achy, indecisive minds. KFI's cooling info gel quickly relieves ignorance and leaves a minty, fresh scent. KFI. And KOST HD2. Los Angeles, Orange County. Live.